Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at a Bible verse. Because just like we get hungry and we feed our physical body, we also need to feed our spiritual bodies. We feed our spiritual bodies with the bread of life, reading the Bible for yourself. You can read a physical copy, a free Bible app, one of the various free websites. It's so important to read the word for yourself, to know what the Bible has to say. We give you a verse of the day, of the day a little crumb of the spread of life, an appetizer, and it's up to you know, some discussions in hopes that you'll open your Bibles. You will read this, these stories for yourself. It's up to you to know what the Bible has to say for yourself, not what someone else has to say. We're going to be in the book of Colossians. If you have your Bible, follow along. Follow along on the screen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, which says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, and the Father by Him. And that's such a beautiful verse. And whatever we're doing, do it for the glory of the Lord. Amplified says it this way. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the Dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, because it's with God gives us everything. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Everything the world has to offer is just a mirage. You know, you may get in your hands for a little bit but it will slip away how do I know that think about celebrities people with money they don't seem like very happy people do they in and out of rehabs and things because why that money does not give them the happiness that they deserve everybody knowing their name doesn't give them the happiness But everything that the Lord gives us is genuine. So whatever we do, in word or deed, we do it all in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Because He will supply all our needs and everything that He gives us. He won't slip through our fingers like sand. Like everything the world will. Read the Bible for yourself. Dust off your Bible. Pick it up, read it. Because as we see the day approaching, as we see all the deception going on in the world, the Bible is the only truth that we have. And you need to know the truth for yourself. Don't rely on me or someone else to give you truth. Open the word for yourself. You know, the world the world has knowledge. You maybe maybe you're like me and you're not very smart in the the knowledge of the world. But let me tell you, you read this word for yourself. You will get knowledge that the world can't even imagine. Because everything in the world, like I said, it's it's a mirage. It just sinks through your, it just goes through your fingers like sand, like dirt. You ever, or anything, you know, you ever, you ever scoop your hand in, you know, flour or dirt or whatever, and the, the dust just comes through your fingers. That's that's what everything the world has to offer does. You may achieve it for a while, but it'll start to fade away. But God loves you so much. You're not alive by accident. You were, cre you were created for a purpose. God didn't create you just to fill the earth with people. 
Much like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. God has a plan for you when he formed you in your mother's womb. God has a plan for your life. And how you find out that plan for your life is you read this word. Dust it off. I like this picture, this dusty Bible, and it says, read me. You used to see people did that with their cars. Their cars would be all dirty and nasty. Someone would write, wash me on their, on their car window. But this is so much more important. Open this Bible. Read it for yourself. Because we all have this void in our life. Some call it a God-shaped hole, a missing puzzle piece that we try to fill with everything the world has to offer. Sex, drugs, alcohol, money, friendship, power, popularity, houses, cars, whatever. Nothing can fill that void, only God. That's why they call it a God-shaped hole. That void is there because we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that is righteous, not one. That void is there because we live in a fallen world. Jesus has come back to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But no one is without sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. To sin means to break God's rules on either thought or action. We see here in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is perfect, not one. We see that in Romans 3.10 and also echoed in Ecclesiastes 7.20. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. I also like what 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10 says. For if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him and him is God. We make God a liar, and his, his word is not in us. So I don't care what you say. None of us are perfect. None of us are without sin. You know, there's people that, in certain denominations and certain positions in a church, that will lead you to believe that they're perfect, that they got it all figured out. But it's a lie. We see all the sin comes short of the glory of God. There's not no one righteous, not one. We say we have no sin. We're deceiving ourselves and calling God a liar. The punishment for our sin is death. We say that in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all face eternal judgment and separation for our sins. We face separation from God. We see that this is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord. And believing in what Jesus did is the greatest gift that we'll ever receive. It's a free gift of God of eternal life. We see that in Romans 6.23. But it's not about works. No one can be saved by their works. You know, you can't be a good enough person. You can't give enough money to charity. There's nothing you can do to be good enough. You can't be righteous enough. Our righteousness is filthy rags. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that for it's by grace you are saved through faith. Now not of yourselves, it is a free gift of God. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And you see what Galatians had to say about us well. And you know, some people like to use Ephesians 2.8 as a license to sin. Saying, I'm under grace. I can do what I want. You can't. When you come to Christ with a true heart of repentance, you turn away from what you're doing. You're sorry for what you do. In prayer you say, Lord, I'm sorry I messed up again. Please forgive me. I'm trying to do better. I want to be good for you. You want to be, you can't be perfect, but you want to be. You want to be pleasing to the Lord. Not somebody who 
thinks that they're because they're saved under grace that they can do what they want. You know, some some denominations think that you just confess or whatever. Some people think, well, you know, I can pray to God later, but I can do what I want now. And I've said this example before. And it, for me, it works with my nieces. Teenagers. No. You'll be ugly acting. But then they'll come and they'll say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to act like that. And two minutes later, they're doing it again. That's the type of repentance that people who think they're saved under grace do. They think, well, I can just, I can do what I want. I can sin any time I want, and God will forgive me. But you see, for, you know, God's forgiveness is a gift. It's not a command. You know, we have to you know, have the sincere heart of repentance that we want to turn away. Not, well, I can do what I want because God is going to forgive me. You know, I had a preacher when I was uh, in my early 20s. Still living for myself, but this didn't sound right. He said, I can go out and murder right now and God will forgive me. Well, there ain't no guarantee that God's going to forgive you. Especially if you go in the heart that, well, I can do what I want and God will forgive me. It doesn't work that way, y'all. We'll talk about repentance a little bit more in a little bit. But it's not about... You're free to live the life you want to live. You see, the, the thing about taking up your cross and walking with Jesus is that you're dying to yourself. You're not wanting to do your own will anymore. You're wanting to do what God wants for you to do. And this saved by grace that people do where I can do what I want I can sit as much as I want because God will forgive me these people are not carrying their cross they're living for themselves and I've been it for 20 years there's a difference between living for yourself and living for the Lord so watch yourself with the repent you know with this saved by grace in this false repentance because yeah, we're never going to be li live long enough to pay the price to atone for our, our sins we'll never be we never be able to pay our way into heaven it's a free gift just like we you know we can't pay our way we can't just demand that God forgives our sins it's a gift that he gives us because he loves us. I like to think about it this way. If you don't accept Jesus' as free gift, his get out of jail free card, you stay in your jail cell, and the jailer opens the doors and says you're free to go, someone paid your bill, but you're relying on your works, so you stay in the cell thinking that you can get into heaven your own way saying no I'm good I'm a good person I can get myself out of here and into heaven you're never going to be good enough you're going to deny your free ticket out of this spiritual prison and stay in that jail cell but you can still escape you can accept that Jesus paid your bail that he paid the price for you and that you're free to go Sin separates us from God. You see there, it makes a crack. Not only does sin separate us from God, it starts to create a valley. And this valley, with each sin, grows bigger and bigger as he sin. With that valley, it gets deeper in water. We see that here. Now the only way to atone for the sin, for God to fill that void in your life, is by the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins.
in the Old Testament. They would use the, the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they'd have to offer another animal. Because once they sinned, that valley would get deeper and wiser. And when it get deeper and wider, this would happen. The bridge would collapse. Because sin makes the valley deeper and wider. And God knows that we can never be good enough. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross for us. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect sinless life. He came to substitute for our sins. Jesus always existed. I mean, we know that from John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So Jesus always existed. He didn't come 4,000 years into history. Die on the cross. He always existed. But he left his throne in heaven. He left eternity. Became flesh. He wasn't an angel. wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and bone. Fully God, fully man, lived a perfect sinless life. He came to the earth just to die for us because he knew that we couldn't be good enough. Jesus was crucified on a cross, died a brutal death, was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights. We know that when he says that Jonah was in the heart of the earth three days in, in the well's belly for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Sorry, I realized that verse, but you know what I mean. And then after three days and three nights, he rose from the dead. Proving that he's God. And that's what yesterday we celebrate, Resurrection Sunday. The day where we celebrate our Lord and Savior, who paid this penalty for us. He rose from the dead because... He was proven that he was God. Because death and the grave had no power over him. Jesus took our place. Suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid the price for our sins when he died on the cross. Here's an animated picture. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood on the, on the cross for our sins. And Jesus' blood covered those sins so that we do not have to die. Jesus was sinless. He was innocent of death. And like an innocent man wanted to be arrested, Jesus died for us because of our sins. We are guilty. We deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus loves us enough to die for us. Jesus truly is the only way to the Father. And that's why we can't just say we live by grace and we're saved by grace and we, we can live how we want. Because this was a high price that Jesus paid on this cross. I don't know if you would realize or appreciate how high a price this was, but it wasn't it wasn't a light thing. This was a extraordinary high price. Such a high price that that animal sacrifice was a one-time bridge. And each time they sinned, they'd offer another one. But Jesus' sacrifice was so powerful that it paid for the sins of everyone that lived in his day, onto the day, and onto the end of the world. We see in John 14, 6, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned. He was the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. And just like that animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect. With no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus lived an absolutely perfect sinless life. Our debt had been paid. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full. When Jesus died, he purchased us redeemed us, bought us back, purchased us with his precious blood, shed on that cross for us. Jesus paid for our sins long before we ever committed them. We see that in Romans 5, 8. That God commended his love towards us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So long before you were ever born, Jesus paid for our sins in full. 
So don't wait till you overcome addiction. Don't wait till you're financially secure. Go to God now. He will help you through any and everything that you're going through. The gospel can be summed up in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I love 17. It's a beautiful accompaniment. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So he didn't come to condemn us when we mess up. You can say, even though these people mess up all the time, I still love them enough that I'm going to come and die on that cross for them. I love this analogy. Jesus ascended up to heaven in much like a courtroom. God the Father is a judge. Jesus is the Son of God. is our defense attorney. We see in that in Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died? Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. We see that he makes he intercedes for us. It says here in 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. So Jesus is our defense attorney. He interceding in the gap for us. Satan is the prosecutor. The accuser of the brethren, as we see there in Revelation 12.10. You see there, the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. Here's a visual. The prosecutor Satan tells God all our sins. You see, Satan's there in your far left, pointing the, his finger down at, this is a representation of us. There in the, at the bottom of your screen. And he's pointing at us and saying, you see what they did? They're guilty. But you see the one with his finger up, saying, hang on a minute. That's Jesus, our defense attorney, who says our sins are stricken from the record, our sins are forgiven. Jesus paid the fine with his blood on the cross. Your salvation is a free gift from God. Receive this free gift that Jesus gave you long before you were born. And as you see there on the screen, Jesus said those sins are stricken from the record. I paid those sins with full, in full. Jesus wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. That we must first individually receive him. Romans 10:13 says, For whosoever shall call and upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love Romans 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And we see, we see in First John chapter 1 earlier, 8 and 10, now we're reading the one between it. Verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, to forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Finally, Acts 3, 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. See, I love that 9 and 10. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Why? Because just like works do not get you into heaven, neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have Jesus in your heart. There's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually, and you see here the one guy, he's got his brain, and he, he seeing Jesus on the cross. He knows that Jesus died on the cross for his salvation. 
On the other hand, you see the guy with the heart. The guy is getting hugged by Jesus in his heart because this person has a relationship. There's a big difference. And, and knowing Jesus intellectually and having him, a relationship with him. When you believe in Jesus with your heart, you talk to him in prayer, you read his word, the Bible, you put Jesus first before your family, before your job, before your money, whatever it may be. I like to think of it this way. Our sins put us in a spiritual prison. And as we wait a trial, when we stand before God, suddenly the door opens. The jailer says we're free to go. Someone paid our bail. It was Jesus. Jesus paid our bail. So now we're free to go. Our sins are not locking us up. But against the spiritual prison anymore, excuse me. That's why we need to repent. We're all running out of time. Jesus is really coming back soon. So repent, come back to God while you still can. Repent means to turn away, to have a change of heart, to change your mind, do a 180, to make a U-turn, to change your behavior. And that's what I was talking about earlier. This is true repentance, not, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it again in five minutes and then say sorry again. It's a change of heart, a change of attitude. You're saying, this behavior that I'm doing, I'm going to change it. Like, say, say somebody did wrong to you. Say somebody stole from you. And then you call them. And they say, well, I'm sorry. And they change their behavior. They don't steal from you again. What they say they're sorry, then they steal from you again. I'm sorry, then they do it again. I'm sorry, I do it again. So I'm trying to think of a better example than that, but that's still the only thing I came up with right now. But I think you know what I mean. These people will apologize to you. But never change their behavior. That's not repentance. That's why it's a slippery slope when people say, I'm saved under grace. I can do what I want. Still sin all I want to do. That's not repentance. We're saved under grace because God knows that we cannot do this on our own. But we're repenting from our ways. We're changing. We're trying to be better for the Lord. We're not going off just sinning well and willy-nilly because we know God will forgive us. Because he, he's, not, he's not contracted to forgive us. It's because He loves us and He wants to forgive us. It's not a have to. Just like you may have a family member that does you wrong. They think, well, because they're family, they have to, they have to forgive me. Not necessarily. If I have a niece treat me wrong, I don't have to forgive them. I mean, I'll forgive them because the Lord wants me to. But I don't have to forgive them because they're my niece. I'll forgive them, you know, if they change their behavior. But if I don't see any change, I mean, why? I'd say, well, it's okay. It's fine. I know you, you know, you're having a bad day or whatever. But the Lord, He forgives us because He loves us, not because He has to. It's not a, it's not contracted I, that He has to forgive us. He didn't say, well, if you, if you say a prayer, then I'm going to forgive everything you do. He didn't say that. That's nowhere in your Bible. You don't believe me? Read your Bible and find out. You know, salvation, repentance is ABC simple. A is for admit you're a sinner. Admit you need Jesus. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit you can't do this on your own. That you need Jesus. B is for believe. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe Jesus died for your sins. Was buried and God raised him from the dead. Believe Jesus paid the price for your sins. 
believe that Jesus did it all for you. Say it's for call or confess. Call the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent. Turn away from your sins. Here's a sample of prayer you can pray. Just talk to God. Prayer is just a conversation with God. God's everywhere. So you can talk to Him aloud. You can talk to Him in your head. He'll hear you. On the screen is this prayer you can say. You can use your own words as long as it comes from your heart. A genuine cry of repentance. And you really mean the words. Then you'll be saved. We're saved through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a 100% free gift from God. So don't think you have to be good enough to somehow earn it. Because you can't. So repent. Believe in Jesus. Then you'll be saved. But you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Go to God first, not last. Wherever you are, God is always with you. God created you for a reason. When you accept Jesus' as free gift and invite Jesus into your life, then God gives you a new heart. God begins to mold you into the person that he created you to be. God continually molds us. Because even though we're saved, we still sin. We still mess up. We're unfinished. God is still working on us. It's like these Legos. You, you pour these Legos on the table. That doesn't look like a house, does it? No, you got to snap the bricks together to make a house. God's continually snapping brick, brick on brick. Molding us into who he created us to be. Remember to read the Bible for yourself. With all the deception in the world, the Bible is the only truth in the world. You need to know what the Bible says for yourself. Because Jesus is coming. You know, we all can see the signs Jesus talked about happening worldwide. So you don't want to wait. You don't want to put Jesus off. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Jesus always already paid the price. It's a free ticket waiting for you to enter heaven. And you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it's too late. You don't have time to wait. Tomorrow is not, not guaranteed. You can die in your sleep tonight. Tomorrow may be just one day too late. So, so turn to Jesus today. Don't wait till you overcome something, till you are able to be financially stable with your family. Whatever your need, run to God now. Just say, Lord, I, I, you know, I need help with this. I'm struggling to put food on the table for my family. I'm struggling to pay the bills. I'm struggling with this disease, with this sickness, with depression, with this sadness, with this mourning over our loved ones. I'm battling an addiction, whatever it may be. Run to God. Go to God with it. Say, Lord, here it is. I'm laying it at your feet. I'm giving it to you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we'll see you in the clouds. Hope you all have a great day.